There are a few ways to make one-dimensional kinematics problems complicated. One is to have objects that change their state of motion. And maybe they go and stop and then go and then stop. Another is to have two objects you have to keep up with. And another is to ask for something at a specific time. So this problem does all three of those. So I'll show you how to solve it. So in this problem, we got two students walking to class. So the introverted student walks at a steady 1.25 meters per second the whole time. The extroverted student actually doesn't take off at first. They, they have to text, right? Texts for 10 seconds and then takes off a little bit faster, 1.6, because in the physics class, there's a lot of people to talk to. They really want to want to get there. So the question is, at what time do they have the same average velocity? Before we get into answering the question, the first step in a problem like this absolutely is to make a graph where you plot the motion of both objects on the same plot. That is critical to solving this kind of problem. So I'm going to plot here the x-axis. And in this case, the x-axis is really just the path to get to class. So the origin will be where they start, and uh, class is up here somewhere. Notice in this problem, we don't have to actually get there. It's really just about their, their motion. Um, the horizontal axis will be time, as it always is in kinematics. So let's plot the introverted student first. Introverted student walks at a steady pace, so it's just a line. Right? So there's the introverted student's position as a function of time. The extroverted student did not move for 10 seconds, so as time marched forward, no displacement. So their plot would go kind of like this for a while, for 10 seconds. I'll put a 10 there if this is in seconds. And then they took off and they went a little bit faster. So when you make these plots, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect, numerically perfect. You just gotta capture the main features. So one feature is that this is a straight line the whole time. This goes as zero for a while, and then it just needs to come up with a higher slope because we know they're going faster. So higher slope will look something like that. And then you've made your plot. And then look at your plot and think about, does anything look interesting with this plot? And one thing that looks interesting is at this point, they cross. This is where they meet. Because if you think about, this is the extroverted student, if you think about what's going to happen, the uh, introverted student got a head start, but the extroverted student went faster. So eventually, of course, they will overtake the introverted student. So at some point they meet, and then they just keep going. So that's all we need to do. We've got to plot it, think about it. Now let's look at the question. At what time do they have the same average velocity? This is another thing to look for in these problems. If you're asked for a specific time, what I like to do is give that a specific label. At what time, we're going to call that T star. Because it can be important not to mix up the independent variable T, you're writing things as a function of time, with this new uh, uh, variable that has a specific value, T star, that you're solving for. So I usually immediately say, OK, I'm looking for T star. Okay. So at what time, T star? Do they have the same average velocity? All right. Well, we could just write the average velocity of each one and solve it. It might help to get a little bit of insight by coming back to the plot, though. Because what is average velocity? It's the displacement over the time. Right? So if we're looking for a specific time t star, which would be uh, t star minus 0, both of these have the same origin of time, right? 0. So t star must be at the same time. So if we wanted these two to have the same delta uh, displacement over t star, displacement over t star, it's really saying when do they have the same displacement, right? Well, they have the same displacement when they met. So from your plot, you can kind of get an idea. Oh, I'm really looking for this. I'm looking for that time right there. Because at this time, introverted student has this uh, displacement over this time, and extroverted student has this displacement over this time. They have the same average velocity. Even without, in, that, without that insight, you could go forward, though. So let's see if we can solve this. So we're going to say the same average velocity. Let's write the average velocity for each of them. V A V G of the introverted student has to be equal to V A V G of the extroverted student. All right, so average velocity of the introverted student never changed their instantaneous uh, velocity, right? Just a constant 1.25. So theirs we already have. It's 1.25. We can just put that one in numerically. 1.25 i hat meters per second, since it's a vector. We'll put all that. 
the uh, extroverted student. Now we've got to think about the definition of average velocity here. It's going to be um, their displacement over delta t. Right? So the delta t is just t star minus zero. We know we're, we're looking for the specific time t star. So t star minus zero, of course, that's just t star. And now we need the displacement between zero and t star. How far did they go? Right? Well, they had two displacements. There was the period from zero to 10, and then there was the period from 10 to this t star. Okay. So let's write those separate. The displacement, um, and we'll say that's the displacement text, because right? that's when nothing much was going on, plus the displacement, and we'll say walk. This is when they actually started going to class. And let's see, to keep going, I'm going to ditch all the vector notation in the units. Everything is i hat meters per second. So we'll say 1.25 equals something over t star. Uh, the displacement while they were texting is zero. Right? So that's just zero. And then the question is, how far did they get here? What was this displacement? Well, let's see. To get that displacement, you kind of have to go back to the definition right, of our velocity. Right. Uh, during this time period is a constant velocity, so that's the average velocity. And we can't just write down the displacement. We're trying to figure it out. We know that it is the average velocity they were going times the, uh, the time interval. So we're using a little bit of you know, d equals vt. We're rearranging this. We'll get into that more in the next lecture, but I'll do a little preview now. So this displacement is the speed there, or the, the velocity was 1.6 meters per second, 1.6 times the time. Uh, but the time is not just t star. They didn't go 1.6 for t star. It's t star minus 10, right? final minus initial. So we'll put t star minus 10. That's a terrible t. And now you can see we have it all down to t star. That's why we used that notation. So all we got to do, that zero goes away. This t star comes up here. You got 1.25 t star equals 1.6 t star minus 16. So then you solve for t star and you get the t star is 45.7 seconds. So you can check your math. And that's the answer. So those are the tricks. Draw it, label something t star, think about what they're really asking you for, and you'll get there.